Hello and welcome to another video about Gamma Ray. My name is Giuseppe D'Angelo. In this video, I'm going to show you some extra feature about the Qt Quick Inspector tool inside Gamma Ray. In the previous video, I've shown you uh, how to start Gamma Ray on a Qt Quick application and start delving a little bit into the uh, features of the Qt Quick panel. Now I want to show you some extra feature, uh, namely the ones that you can find around the preview that is inside Gamma Ray when you select the Qt Quick Inspector. So what I'm going to do is launch a little Qt Quick application and uh, we're going to launch Gamma Ray of course and inspect what's available for us inside that tool. What we have here is a demo that comes with Qt. It's the wearable demo. You can find it in the welcome screen of Qt Creator. I'm going to launch this demo now on my computer and attach Gamma Ray to it. So I'm simply going to run it. There it is, that's the demo. And I'm going also to start Gamma Ray. And attach it to the running demo. Here we are. Sorry, that took a second, but we're ready. Okay, so what you're seeing right now on the screen is uh, both Gamma Ray inspecting the demo as well as the actual application running at the same time. Okay, we have already discussed what's available in us inside this screen. So that's the Qt Quick Scenes tool. On the top left, you can see that we have the uh, item tree. Those are all the items inside our scene. On the right, we have uh, the list of properties for the currently selected item. We have all the methods that are known to Qt, all the signals and slot connections, the bindings and so on. Those are all available here on the right. But uh, what I want to focus upon today is this preview area that is found here in the bottom left corner. So what's, what's this preview area about? This is a live preview of, of our running application. Uh, indeed, if I interact with the application, you can see that the application does something and that very something is reflected inside Gamma Ray. But this panel has a few extra options. So it's not just a row preview. Uh, you can see that above it, there is a series of buttons that you can select in order for this area to do something meaningful for us. So let's see what those buttons do. Uh, the first few buttons here, uh, these ones that are available right at the beginning of the bar, uh, enable some more advanced visualization modes. These modes are mostly about profiling. I'm going to talk about them in more detail in an upcoming video of this series. So again, hold your horses for a little bit. Uh, but uh, let's focus for now on the reminder because they're also extremely useful. The one which is currently selected, this one right here, it's the pan tool. Uh, the pan tool, as the name says, simply allows us to move around inside Q inside the, uh, the application. So I can, uh, if my application screen is big or bigger than this area, I can easily move around in order to focus on a specific area. Similarly, if I zoom in a lot, right, like this, I want to pan around in order to focus on one specific aspect of my application. The second tool, it's the measure tool. So this tool is mostly for artists, I would say, or for developers that need to double check that uh, the sizing they have when they arrange a Qt Quick interface uh, actually match with the specification. So it's easy within Qt Quick to align elements, to answer elements to each other, but what if you want to double check that indeed what you produced matches the original design? You can just enable this tool and take a measurement, which I'm going to do now. I'm just clicking here and measuring, for instance, the distance between these two elements. And the tool is telling me that the distance is 40 pixels. Maybe the distance is right, maybe it's wrong, who knows? Uh, anyhow, this tool allows you to measure it visually, writing on an application and especially on your running application. You don't need to take a screenshot and then check inside Photoshop or a similar tool. The third tool we have is probably the most useful one. At least it's one I use all the time. It's the picking tool. What does this tool do? This tool allows us to select one element uh, of our scene visually. So there are basically two different ways we can select an element inside a Qt-Quick scene. Uh, the first way is navigating the item tree, which is available right here. And then we open up all the, uh, all the elements until we find the element I want to focus my attention on. But that's kind of a burden, it's cumbersome. A typical application has thousands of these elements, so it's very hard to find the one that I want. Instead, I can find it visually. I can just click on the element I want, 
and this will make gamma ray selected element. So for instance, say I want to know where the text that creates this settings writing is, uh, is inside my application. I can just click on it and this selects it. So not only gets selected here in the UI and we see the preview that has changed a little bit, but also gets selected up here in the item tree and it's there, meaning also it's available now in the right. That is all the properties I'm seeing, all the methods, all the connections belong to this very item. I can quickly uh, modify some of these properties if I want to, or double check that the ones I have correspond to the ones I want. So for instance, for this particular element, this settings element, uh, I can search for its uh, text property. Yep, and say, okay, the text property, which is down here, it's currently saying settings, but I want to change it to say, hello world. And when I do that, you can see that uh, this property has changed, of course, not only inside Gamma Ray, but also in the real application, and of course, as well, into uh, the preview we have down here. Something else that you may notice is that now that an element is selected, uh, its visualization has changed. So this element appears in this red, uh, it's red tint, I would say, and there are some anchoring lines around it, meaning that this element actually has some anchor layout applied to it. And once more, we can use this visualization in order to debug if we have a problem with the anchoring. So what these lines are telling me is that this element is currently anchored center to center uh, of the parent. And there is also an offset between the vertical center and the vertical center of the parent. And the offset is visualized here. It's uh, kind of a little bit hard to read, but I'll try to zoom in so that you can read it. It says that there is 14.5 pixels of offset. That's eventually where the designer told me to place that text. Then continuing the exploration of some of these buttons, the next button is the redirect input button. It's the button available right here. It says redirect input. So what does this button do? This button allows me to uh, click or to send in general mouse events to my preview inside Gamma Ray and have Gamma Ray transport these mouse events and reproduce them inside the actual application. Now, why do I want to do something like that? Well, of course, if the application is running on my very same machine, I don't need that. I just click on the actual application, right? But suppose your application is running on a embedded target or on a mobile phone or even a remote target somewhere else, uh, then you don't necessarily have the means to go to the embedded machine and click physically on it in order to, for it to do something. So Gamma Ray has this convenient shortcut. What you can do is select here the redirect input. And now everything I'm going to do on the user interface is as if I'm doing it on the real application. So for instance, if I click on this icon right here, as you can see now, this icon becomes the current one because that's exactly what happens in the real application. Uh, you saw the real application animating as well, right? And so on. So it's definitely a, a good trick in order to do this kind of remote debugging, I would say, when you have embedded target somewhere else and you want to inspect it from your workstation running Gamma Ray. The next tool is called Inspect Colors. As Dem says, it's a very designer-oriented tool. It's the tool that we use in order to check a given color on the scene. Once more, this tool avoids taking screenshots, opening up something like Photoshop, and checking that the colors actually match. So if I want to check, for instance, that the green here used is the right kind of green, I can simply select the pick color over the pixel, and this tells me that this green has this given RGB values. And finally, one last tool which is available is this last tool here. It's actually more not just a tool, but an option, I would say. It's called Decorate Target. So you see all these lines and all these decorations that are now visible inside Gamma Ray. You can have the very same decorations in the actual application. So I click here. And now you see that the actual application here uh, has all these answering lines, the highlight of the current element and so on. Uh, this is again, mostly useful if you have an embedded target. So if you want to see these on the actual device or inside the actual application, because you need to take measurements or debug something, uh, this is the way that the camera can help you having the same metrics visualized on the actual application. So that's all I have for you today. Uh, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you get notified when we publish more similar content. In the meanwhile, thank you very much for listening and take care.